Ever wondered what the inside of a rocket engine looks like? Well, I've been reading about the semi-cryogenic rocket engines for a while and it was really fascinating and I was really interested to get to know how a semi-cryogenic rocket engine works. So basically semi-cryogenic rocket engine is an upgrade on the cryogenic rocket engines that have been used and uh, ISRO is also working on a semi-cryogenic rocket engine but right now I am here at Agnikul Cosmos. So these people have been manufacturing semi-cryogenic uh, rocket engines with a much lesser capacity. But uh, to get to know more on that, uh, I'm going to intrude uh, people who have been working. So with me here is uh, Rishabh, he's a additive manufacturing engineer and a senior manager at Agnikul Cosmos. Hi Rishabh. Hi, uh, so I want you to explain how the semi cryogenic engine works and what you guys have manufactured so here we are manufacturing semi cryogenic engines so, so what is semi cryogenic engine what is how it is different from cryogenic engine is that so in semi cryogenic engine we are using one fuel at uh, fuel at room temperature and oxidizer at uh, cryogenic temperature like minus 200 degrees centigrade since one fuel is at room temperature one is at cryogenic temperature so then we call it semi cryogenic engine so our fuel is aviation turbine fuel and oxidizer is liquid oxygen. In cryogenic engines, uh, uh, fuel is liquid hydrogen and another oxidizer is liquid uh, oxygen only, generally. But the liquid hydrogen is very difficult to carry as well as transport also. Storing problem is too much. So that's why semi cryogenic engine is cost efficient and also transport friendly. So that's why we are developing semi cryogenic engine. So if you see, this is a semi cryogenic engine, completely 3D printed part. These, these are the various ports and this engine sits this is the part that propels the whole rocket so this is the part that carries the whole rocket to the outer space and this will sit at the bottom you must have seen many launches where the fumes are coming out so this is where the fumes comes fume comes out this will sit at the bottom of the vehicle any launch vehicle this is the extreme bottom part so we have two stages first stage and second stage so first stage will contain cluster of engines and second stage will contain single engine that also once stage separation happened, first stage separated from second stage, then this engine will come into the play. So if you can see this port, here from here the liquid oxygen will enter and from this port aviation turbine fuel will enter. Once they will go inside, this is the injector area. It is where they will convert it into a fine droplets. So this is what a single injector looks like. So this is from where this is the liquid oxygen entry, this is the fuel entry. They will go inside, swirl around and come out as a droplets, very fine droplets. Okay. So there are multiple number of injectors, but this is only a single, this is how it looks like a single injector. Once this is all embedded together, it will look like from the top. So this is an injector plate. So that's how it will look like. You can see those small, small holes. Right. These are the small holes consisting of injectors. Okay, can you show me how, where this sits inside? Yeah, so it is like exactly like this. These are the mounting parts where the above body of the rocket will sit. And at the center, igniter ignition coil will be sitting. This is an igniter. So how it works like, it works similar to what a like, like, uh, engine works. From one side oxidizer will enter, from one side fuel will enter and it will generate a spark. The uh, ignition process will be very brief just to generate a spark for the uh, actual fuel and uh, uh, oxidizer combination. Because of this spark ignition, they will get catch fire and generate the thrust. So once the thrust is generated, by Newton's third law, it will propel up. So whatever parts you are seeing here, from injectors to igniters, everything is in, combined together to make one part. So this consists of thousand parts combined into one part and that is possible only using 3D printing technology. So this is an EOS M404, this is a metal 3D printer. We use this uh, setup to manufacture our semi-cryogenic thrust engines and uh, it, uh, the raw material is in the form of metal powders and how it works it's like just like making a dosa in dosa we form a batter and then heat it up so similar thing like this we form a batter of metal powder laser will melt the region and what region it melts is based on whatever 3d input we have given to the machine so suppose i want to print a cube I, it, the laser will melt only square one time then it will go down again layer of powder will come again one square it will keep on doing that until a full square whatever height is required is done then ultimately we take out all the powder and that square is formed so that's how metal 3d printing works agenda of manufacturing it with the 3d printing is like we can reduce the cost of manufacturing so we can reduce the cost as well as time 
for for example time this will be completed in 76 hours of uh, printing whereas if we go for conventional manufacturing it will take around 6 to 8 months to just to manufacture this part and that too with a well, high highly skilled uh, person but if we go with 3d printing only skill is required to operate the machine so this is how a semi cryogenic rocket engine works and uh, Agnikul Cosmos are expected to launch this engine somewhere later this year, hopefully in the first half of 2024. And once they do that, let us see how semi-cryogenic technology changes Indian space science. Subscribe to the Federal's YouTube page for more news and updates.